The 6.5 is on the road at Pure Accelerate 2024 here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Daniel, it's been an exciting year. And, you know, maybe we'll talk about the, the summit where the theme, because the year 2024 is all about enterprises getting that value out of AI and the continued build out of infrastructure and infrastructure platforms. And infrastructure is cool again. Absolutely. At our 6.5 Summit, it was AI Unleashed. And the trend continues here, Pat. We are here at Pure Accelerate in your second home. I'm proud to say that, uh, you know, my second home is overseas, but, you know, all the same. But no matter where we are, right. whether, whether we're in, in Taiwan, whether we've been in Europe, whether we've been here in the U.S., yeah. AI is at the center. But I love what you said. It's not just about AI for AI. Yeah. It's about extracting business value. And that is what I've been hearing so far right. here at Pure Accelerate. Yeah, so it's Pure's signature event, and it's my pleasure to introduce Charlie, who runs the show here at Pure, and he has been a 6'5 guest many times. Charlie, welcome back. Thank you, Pat. It's always a pleasure to speak to you and to Daniel. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. It's been an exciting couple months. Yeah. You had some knockout earnings. Uh, here we are at the big event. Congratulations. And you know, your technology just happens to be aligning with AI. It's fun. Well, you know, every dog has a, their, their day, right? Not by accident. Yeah, not by accident. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Congratulations on all the success, Charlie. It's yeah. it's always fun. You know, we did talk to you recently at the new headquarters. Yeah. Uh, good to have a chance to sit down and, and go a little deeper with you at your, at your signature event. Yeah. I mean, look, let's just start with the kind of overview and announcements. The yeah. socials were flooded. Saw a lot of people that I respect putting some really positive feedback and commentary out there. Yeah. AI is red hot. What are the big announcements that we're focused on? So the, uh, there are several big announcements. Uh, one that we're very proud of is what we're calling Pure Fusion. So this is the first um, effort by any company at any time to make uh, storage operate for enterprises like a cloud of storage rather than as individual arrays. Right. And you know, in, in the consumer world, we now all use some type of cloud storage. Right, uh, we generally don't use remote uh, uh, external disk drives on right. on our systems. Right, uh, we uh, and in the cloud, their uh, data storage has always been virtualized. Right. But in the enterprise, it's individual arrays on individual application environments. And what we've done now is make all of our arrays. We've networked them. They appear as a single cloud of storage in an enterprise environment. That opens up a lot of different capabilities. One is makes it much easier to manage. Two is it makes it much more economical. Three, it allows them to offer their developers cloud-like storage services. So the developers only um, uh, are able to get access to storage via API. So it makes it all API based. And it does one other thing. It makes all of the data in an enterprise stored on pure arrays accessible to AI and analytics workloads, right. rather than having to replicate the data into specialized environments. So simplicity, efficiency, and accessibility to AI, super important stuff. And it's funny, you know, I, I was, we were kind of joking about, you know, accidentally being optimized for AI. It's, it's anything but that. That's right. And in fact, um, I mean, I feel like Pure has been ahead of the duck uh, in, in many industry transitions. Yes. Right, whether it was uh, first to all flash, uh, your design as it related to leveraging software mm -hmm. uh, so much, uh, a, even a, a hardware ecosystem that allowed you to plug things in and out so you could have your base system and upgrade without actually uh, upgrading. Without taking the applications down. It, so non-disruptive upgrades. Exactly. Swap, exactly. So yes. none of this is an accident, but uh, let's talk a little bit about your investments in AI uh, to get this going, not only on the development side, but even go to market is important too. Yes. Well, let's talk about, uh, it, it, I actually break now AI down into five different categories. AI is not one thing, and right. we always have trouble speaking about AI if, you, you know, if, if it's five different things, sure. right? There's AI for massive GPU clouds, and that's all about performance, right? And specsmanship, right? Um, it, uh, there's AI for normal, um, enterprise environments for inference and RAG, right? And making that data both accessible, but also yeah, economical, right? Um, then there is um, uh, AI for 
uh, what I had mentioned before, which is making all of your data in the enterprise where it sits today, right. accessible for AI analysis, right? Yes. Then there's how are we using AI just to improve our business, right? To increase the, um, if, uh, the pr uh, productivity of our engineers, of our marketing people, of our salespeople. And then there's what are we use doing to put AI in our products to make our products easier to use, more effective for our customers, right? Those are five different, different AI environment, environments, right? And so, what are we, uh, so let's talk about some of those. Uh, we, as you identified, we announced a bunch of AI capabilities in our products to make them easier to use for our customers. So now customers will be able to use their natural language, a natural query, to ask what would be very complicated questions, not just about how a storage array is working, right. but how their in, entire storage environment is working relative to security. You know, is, is the environment secure? Is the data secure? Have they turned on all of the right capabilities to make sure they're taking advantage of our security capabilities? Right. Uh, they can ask about um, uh, workloads oh, I'm starting to see a slowdown. Uh, what's causing it? What can I do to fix the slowdown that seems to be coming in my environment? I'm expecting, uh, for example, you know, a, a big surge at the end of the year, Black Friday and Christmas, you know, in workloads. Am I prepared for that? What do I need to do to be fully prepared for that surge when it comes along? And, you know, they can do this in natural language and, uh, you know, the system will respond to them and tell them exactly what they need to do in right. order to be prepared. Yeah, there's a tremendous amount of opportunity, Charlie, and it is a little bit of uh, a wave of customer zero, as I like to say. Yes. The wave is every company is sort of how are we implementing AI for ourselves, and you're a very customer forward company. You've always Correct, been right. very net promoter centric, had, I believe, the highest score in the, highest industry. In, in the tech industry. <laughs> for yes. a long time, yes. and something that I've constantly touted that part of your low attrition high net revenue uh, expansion has always had to do with having right. really happy customers. AI, things like co-pilots, right. you know, which you, you've announced, give more functionality, flexibility, and usability, yes. which really fits your ethos, Correct. which I think is super important. Um, another thing that I think is really important, though, too, is, is, is what you're doing from the data platform standpoint. Yes. right? Because in the end, AI, making it usable, yeah. valuable, comes down to the data being accessible Correct. to the applications, yes. to the compute, um, and of course, having a platform that's extensible to, to the data that our entire environments have. Otherwise you only get yeah. part value. That's right. Talk a little bit about how you're thinking about data platform today and kind of how you see that evolve. Yeah. So today, uh, you know, customers talk about their data, but frankly, what they have now are probably hundreds of data sets, ungoverned by the way. They make, you know, they'll, they'll replicate a data set for uh, development or for backup and the development will replicate it and it'll be replicated again and you ask a customer, well, how do you keep track of all these copies? And you get a blank stare. They are not able to keep track of this, right? So simply uh, having all of your replications occur by policy and then be cataloged and, and tracked helps with security because now you know where all your data is. If it's done by policy, you're not, you're not putting uh, copies where you, don't, where you don't want them or in the hands of the people right. that, you, that you don't want them, right? So already it starts helping uh, uh, all by itself with security. And then if you don't have extra copies, you're not paying for extra storage mm -hmm. uh, for those extra copies. And so again, it saves money. It also saves money by load balancing uh, your, uh, your data sets across all of your available arrays rather than having it be dedicated to just one environment, right? right? So you know, again, I don't think you have to convince anyone that operating anything as a shared resource or as a cloud of consistent environments is more effective, more cost effective, uh, more secure than operating individual, you know, unique uh, islands of, uh, of, in this case, storage. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, different strokes for different folks. You talked about, I think, five different AI ways yeah. and investments you're doing AI. And there's, there's a lot of diversity when it comes to data centers and the use cases that yes. they're leveraging. Uh, your technologies, I, I have to ask, uh, you said something very provocative in your, okay. in your Q1 earnings yeah. that I, I, I want to drill down on. Sure. 
And, you know, you've talked about large social media companies and, and, and things like that, but you talked about hyperscaler opportunities. Yes. And I don't normally associate Pure with the hyperscalers. Uh, appropriately can, can so. You, so I, can you, what are you doing there? What are your expect? What, what can you talk well, about? What he's saying is he wants names. Yeah, <laughs> I know <laughs> that. Contract size. I know that. <laughs> you can spill everything if you'd like we're, we're for the 6-5 right? audience. Just for you guys. Just exactly. For your, <laughs> Um, so, you know, we, we've, uh, in order to people, uh, you know, companies that want to stay, um, you know, want conversations to stay confidential, in order to keep it confidential, we, we limit our discussion in this area to the top 10, what yeah. we call the top 10 hyperscalers. Okay? Yes. Um, and uh, we're talking to an, a, a significant number of them. And there's, uh, like there is in any new environment, we have a lead horse. Let's call it a lead horse. Yes. Right? And I'm, con uh, I feel, I, I, I'm still knocking on wood. I'm hoping that's wood. <laughs> Uh, below me, um, that we will sign our, our first, uh, we will get our first design win at a hyperscaler this year. All right. So what does that mean? What it means is that their, let's call it their standard storage environment, which as you know, in hyperscalers is, is hard disk, that, that we will get our first design win for, rep, uh, for replacing that with our pure technology. What is our pure technology? It's, it, it's our um, direct flash technology, right. the combination of software and hardware that allows us to get the best possible price performance out of flash and now actually be able to compete from a price performance level with hard disk. Yeah, Charlie, that's, I mean, I mean given the R&D budgets of the hyperscalers yes. and even their investments that, that they're making directly with the flash companies, flash controller companies, uh, I think that's a huge statement. Yes. And basically says that, that what you are building is differentiated and quite frankly, doesn't make economic sense for them to try to go off and do themselves. That's correct. I mean, I mean these are companies that I do mean, their own look, semiconductors. Yes. But I right? mean, if, if, if you're one of the, you know, the, the bean counters out there with your little spreadsheet, you know, you do got to kind of play with what he's saying because, sure. you know, when you're selling to enterprises, the size, these data centers are substantial. But we're no, talking about these hyperscale. No, many times. If you look size. at the NVIDIA lift, yes, and obviously a big sponsor here at Accelerate. But I'm saying everybody knows concentration. Yes. Right. So you guys kind of have a really great situation where if you can land inside of a yeah. few of these, big uh, up and to the right. Correct. Having yeah. said that, you're not, de you're, not you're still very diversified because yes. you've already built yourself on a core of enterprise. So well, it would be a huge change for the, the, the trajectory. That's exactly right. And one of the advantages we have is we've been developing this technology. And remember, it's not the hardware. Anyone could replicate. The, you know, they showed software, software, it's, software. It's all software. The hardware yes. is easily replicatable, right? But the software we've been developing for 10 years, and we have economies of scale because it's the same technology that we use yep. for the enterprise, right? Uh, now, they may not decide to use all of our software. They need the core part that right. fits inside their storage environment, right? But yeah. we are now at the point, as we've indicated, you know, for many quarters, where flash technology now at a system level can compete with hard drives, uh, you know, on a, on a price per bit. Yeah, you and showed so, that SLC, and so we're there. MLC. I and mean, one-tenth the space yes. power and cooling. Yes. I mean, you know, and now power is at a premium, exactly. right? Exactly. Uh, exactly. So, so we only have a, 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 min a minute or two left, Charlie. And really appreciate you carving out time. We know how much demand there is at events. I mean, he only has 12 problem. more meetings after this, I think. We're the best meeting, <laughs> but by but, far. <laughs> thank you. Oh, I, I, I said, hang on a second. I, Here we I, go. I said that on camera. You're not going to show this today, right? No, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, no, no, of course not. But the, the, the one thing I did want to kind of get to is, Charlie, we talked a lot about AI. Yeah. I read through all the announcements, listened to the keynote. You know, you're doing things in cyber resiliency. You're doing things in platform. You're doing yep. things to improve your SLA. You've got all your AI announcements. Just give us the quick, you've had a lot of customer meetings. I think I've heard like dozens already in just yep. a few hours. How are they responding to this? And, and beyond AI, is are, are those announcements catching uh, some really They really are. Well, first of all, cyber, you know, is, is just such a, um, a, a huge issue today. You know, sadly, uh, yeah. it's a huge issue today. So everything we can do to make our customers' data, uh, give them the ability to recover from an incident as quickly as possible of great, great interest, right? I, I would say Fusion is now, now that it's you know gonna be delivered this year as an upgrade, yes. has you know captivated the audience and they're really starting to think about data. You know, this is, challenges all the assumptions that people make about, about enterprise storage, right? Um, and so uh, it's, it's really driving a lot of creativity, I think, 
yeah. uh, by our customers uh, overall. So that's been uh, big. And frankly, you know, this uh, we haven't spoken about it, but this movement, increasing movement to as a service, where what we're delivering is a true SaaS service right. for storage, where the location of this, where the customer can choose where the, where the data is located, uh, but not have to manage it at all. We do all of that you know, is uh, growing like crazy and, of course, uh, continuing to be of great interest to our customers. Right. Well, it's, it's, it's outstanding. I, I love the fact, by the way, the backdrop behind Charlie there. It's got that orange color. You've got people walking around in orange suits. You've got yep. a bit yep. of a, you've got this amazing Six Fly logo has Six orange five. in it. Yeah, yeah. The logo. Orange, the, the, our orange is the new green. Right? Right? Yeah. We're, uh, yeah. we're clearly on to the cool trend. Thank uh, you. Appreciate Charlie, that. Charlie uh, Giancarlo. Thank you so much for joining us here on the 6.5. We would love to have you back again soon. I expect that we will. Sure. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Always appreciate it. And here we are at Pure Accelerate 2024 in Las Vegas. That was Charlie Giancarlo, CEO of Pure Storage, talking to us about not just its AI vision, but its overall strategy and how it's winning in this opportune moment in the market. Pat, we got more coverage coming here at Pure Accelerate 2024. Stay with us. Subscribe. Be part of our community. But for now, we got to say goodbye. See you all soon.